After a flawless re-entry and landing, everyone expected Ship 38 to look nearly perfect. But something strange appeared on its surface. No bright orange burns like before. Instead, subtle brown streaks ran across the hull. The metallic tiles were gone, yet oxidation still formed. Why? Was this just leftover heat stress? Or a sign of something deeper happening beneath the skin of Starship's heat shield? In today's TechMap episode, we're diving into the mysterious marks left on Ship 38, what caused them, what they reveal about SpaceX's new heat shield design, and why engineers are both excited and cautious about what they found. Starship Flight 11, which launched on October 13, 2025, was not just another test flight. It marked a major milestone for SpaceX and served as one more successful integration test of the fully upgraded Starship version 2 design. After months of engineering work, data reviews, and non-stop testing at Starbase, Flight 11 officially proved that the version 2 design phase has reached its peak. Now let's talk about Ship 38, the main focus of this mission. S-38 is the final Block 2 model built specifically as a test platform for aggressive heat shield experiments. It was designed to endure extreme conditions and deliver valuable data, not to look perfect, but to perform perfectly under pressure. TPS Goal Here's the big question everyone wants to know. What did SpaceX actually do differently with the thermal protection system on Ship 38? And why is this system considered a major step forward compared to earlier flights, such as Flight 10? As usual, SpaceX took a bold approach with this mission. Instead of playing it safe, they decided to intentionally stress the TPS system to test the vehicle's limits of endurance. The stress stems from intentionally removing several sections of heat shield tiles. These weren't random removals either. They were carefully chosen, often in groups of four, on the belly and sides, where heat is the most intense, like along the midline and near the flaps. The goal is to create deliberate weak points. By doing this, engineers could observe how the surrounding tiles and underlying materials reacted when direct heat exposure was introduced in controlled zones. Some sections of the vehicle didn't even have the backup ablative layer, meaning bare stainless steel had to withstand scorching temperatures of over 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. The purpose behind this was to collect crucial data on how plasma intrusion affects key internal components like propellant tanks and feed lines. One of the major innovations tested on Ship 38 was the expanded use of a material called crunch wrap designed to fill the gaps between tiles and stop superheated gas from seeping in. It was first introduced in a limited capacity on Flight 10, where it proved to be effective. And this time, engineers applied it far more extensively, especially around the flap hinges and along tile edges that are more prone to erosion. Another significant change was the removal of the metallic tiles that had caused oxidation issues during Flight 10. During re-entry, Ship 37's heat shield displayed a dramatic orange and white glow, something Elon Musk later confirmed was the result of a coolant leak that oxidized the metallic tiles, giving them that fiery sheen. While the effect looked spectacular, this oxidation actually posed a serious performance risk to the thermal protection system, which is why eliminating it has become such a critical focus for SpaceX engineers. The aft flaps received major upgrades with improved tile coverage and enhanced structural shielding. On the leeward side, SpaceX added extra heat shield tiles to help absorb and spread out the extreme thermal energy, preventing the underlying stainless steel structure from overheating. These aft flaps are crucial. They're the key control surfaces that stabilize and guide Starship during its descent and landing, especially at high velocities. Because of their position at the rear, they endure far more heat and aerodynamic pressure than the forward flaps making them some of the most challenging components on the vehicle to protect. So, with all those upgrades in place, 
how did Ship 38's thermal protection system actually hold up during the fiery re-entry? As Starship began descending and hit the re-entry phase, it pitched to about a 45-degree angle to maximize drag, slowing its speed while generating massive amounts of heat. From there, it gradually leveled out before performing that signature flip maneuver we've all come to expect. This stage is often referred to as the furnace, and for good reason. Before fully entering the furnace, brilliant plasma streams began forming around the vehicle as the ship slammed into the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. The friction between Starship's surface and atmospheric particles created glowing plasma that wrapped the vehicle in incredible shades of yellow, red, and pink. These vivid colors actually tell a story about the plasma's temperature and energy levels. Yellow tones appear when temperatures soar between 10,000 and 15,000 Kelvin. That's due to intense ionization of nitrogen and oxygen molecules, which emit light at shorter wavelengths. Red and pink, by contrast, come from cooler plasma. Still blisteringly hot at 5,000 to 10,000 Kelvin, often caused by nitrogen or oxygen in lower energy states, or even trace hydrogen emissions. Onboard cameras captured that stunning orange and purple glow enveloping Ship 38 as it tore through the atmosphere. Those colors revealed distinct temperature zones, yellow and orange highlighting the most extreme heat regions with strong ionization, while purple showed slightly cooler but still ferociously hot plasma layers. In other words, Ship 38's TPS was facing temperatures of up to 15,000 Kelvin and holding strong. This lines up with reports that Ship 38 hit some truly extreme speeds during re-entry. Anywhere from Mach 5 all the way up to Mach 25. That's 5 to 25 times the speed of sound. Far faster than even the quickest jet or a rocket on its way to orbit. It's important to understand that the plasma generated at those speeds reaches much higher temperatures than the surface of the heat shield itself. The tiles are designed to handle up to about 1,650 degrees Celsius, around 1,923 kelvins. But the surrounding plasma can get far hotter. And it didn't just interact with the heat shield. It also grazed the exposed stainless steel sections of the hull, where temperatures climbed above 1,000 degrees Celsius. After the flight, Starship engineers were thrilled by the results. Even without full tile coverage, the rocket endured temperatures soaring past 1,600 degrees Celsius during re-entry, performed its dramatic flip, and then touched down softly in the Indian Ocean. That's a massive engineering win. Astrophysicist Peter Haig explained that this success largely comes down to Starship's construction. It's made of stainless steel a metal that doesn't melt until around 1,500 degrees Celsius and can flex rather than crack under stress. In simple terms, it's like choosing a bendy, durable toy instead of a fragile one, a smart move when you're facing the furnace of atmospheric re-entry. On the other hand, he noted that there could still be limitations when it comes to how stainless steel performs under the most extreme conditions. His comment, haven't yet found the limit, suggests that the true threshold of what this material can endure hasn't been fully tested or defined. In other words, while stainless steel has already proven to be a strong and reliable choice, there are still unknowns left to explore. Elon Musk responded enthusiastically, saying, stainless steel for the win. He emphasized that future improvements on heat shield design depend on a constant cycle of iteration testing, and refinement. That mindset, continuous innovation through trial and learning, is exactly what drives progress in space technology, where new challenges demand fresh ideas and bold experimentation. Unlike Flight 10, which suffered major flap damage and lost several tiles, Ship 38 held up incredibly well, maintaining its structural integrity from start to finish. The aft flaps once highly vulnerable to plasma erosion, showed only minor surface scuffs and stress marks. This demonstrates that Ship 38's heat shield and flaps were significantly more resilient 
with no major tile losses like in the previous flight. This is thanks to SpaceX made meaningful upgrades to enhance protection during re-entry and landing. One big reason for this improvement is how the plasma behaves around Starship. During re-entry, the plasma doesn't transfer all of its heat directly to the tiles. Instead, the ionized gas forms a sort of natural barrier, a glowing cushion that partially deflects the heat. Meanwhile, the ceramic tiles themselves are engineered to reflect, absorb, and disperse heat efficiently, so the spacecraft's surface doesn't overheat. If a tile is exposed to the plasma for too long, tiny bits of its surface can vaporize, a process known as ablation. But these tiles are built tough enough to withstand that effect. As the plasma cools and shifts color from yellow or orange to red or pink, the temperature on the tiles drops, giving the heat shield a brief reprieve. The tiles also have to survive rapid temperature swings without cracking. Thanks to SpaceX's modular tile design, any damaged tiles can be swapped out quickly, ensuring the Starship can be turned around and prepped for its next flight efficiently. This approach is key to keeping the vehicle safe, reusable, and ready to face the extreme conditions of space re-entry again and again. While the TPS system performed impressively overall, a few unusual details showed up as a result of SpaceX's deliberate stress testing. Even without the metallic tiles, familiar oxidation streaks were still visible on the hull after landing. Compared to Ship 37, however, the rust on Ship 38 was far less widespread, and instead of the vivid orange seen previously, it appeared as a more subdued brown tone. So what caused the difference? For Flight 11, SpaceX upgraded the heat shield design. Most of the tiles stayed firmly in place, meaning much less stainless steel was exposed to re-entry heat. The removal of metallic tiles also helped reduce the oxidation effect. On Ship 37, the bright orange color was caused by iron-3 oxide, a type of rust that forms under extreme heat. The brown tint on Ship 38, on the other hand, likely came from magnetite, a form of iron oxide that develops when temperatures are lower or the exposure time is shorter. This shift indicates the new tiles did their job better, especially across the vehicle's main body. However, the presence of rust at all still points to a recurring issue for Starship, a coolant leak. It's the same underlying problem that caused oxidation back on Flight 10, and it remains something SpaceX engineers will want to eliminate in future iterations. During Starship Flight 11, Analysis of footage and data after landing showed that a part of the fuel tank had been damaged during the fastest and hottest part of re-entry. This damage likely caused a small leak in the tank, and some fuel escaped. Just seconds before the ship touched the water, there was a brief but very bright flash of flame near the nose cone, the front, and the area where cargo is stored. This problem probably started because some of the protective heat shield tiles in that area were deliberately taken off for testing to see how tough the tank was under extreme heat and pressure. The combination of very high temperatures, air pressure, and shaking might have caused cracks to form in the metal tank. The leaked fuel then escaped into the cargo bay and caught fire because of the extreme heat. Thankfully, the fire didn't cause a big explosion partly because of nitrogen-filled pressure tanks that kept the damage from getting worse. Even with this problem, the Starship kept flying safely and landed as planned. So this leak was a small but important sign for SpaceX to fix the tank's strength and heat protection before future flights.